Hello, beautiful people. I'm talking to you today about a book called The Fungal Pharmacy, written by Robert Rogers. And I hadn't met him before when I first got into mushrooms, and I was looking online and found some books that I thought would be interesting to start looking at and to learn about other mushrooms after Amanita muscaria did so much for me and then lion's mane did so much for my brain. And this was the one that I saw that I found. And then a few years later, I was fortunate enough to go to Canada and actually interview him. I have that video on YouTube and on amnitadreamer.net if you'd like to see that interview. But here in this video, I met him again at a place that he and I were both speaking at a conference. And after you know our speaking engagement was over, whatever, we sat outside and had a chat. And you'll see that chat here. What's interesting about this book is of all of the books, that talk about Amanita muscaria. This is the only one prior to me and all my work and spreading information about it. Now there have been a few books that have said positive things about it. But before my work and before I was Amanita Dreamer, this was the only book that actually discussed Amanita muscaria, the beginning of its listing. And it goes for pages about the medicinal benefits of Amanita muscaria. And he talks about the traditional uh, original uses by different cultures around the world and what it was called and how they worked with it and then how we work with it today. And he gets into the science of it. But he treats all mushrooms this way. And the book, the table of contents, is divided up. Part one, the mushrooms. And he doesn't even list it in the table of contents because he covers hundreds of medicinal mushrooms. And then... The lichens, did you know that there were medicinal lichens? He gives beautiful photos. He gives their scientific names. He gives where they are found. He talks about the culture and folklore of the mushrooms that he's teaching you about. This book is rightly called The Fungal Pharmacy. After I interviewed him a few years ago, we would go on to continue to bump into each other <laughs> at one you know, mushroom festival and conference after another until he was like, hey, you should jump in on mine. And I'm like, hey, can I put you on my channel? <laughs> so he's amazing. He's an amazing human being, but he's just an amazing author. And he has done a lot of clinical work, published his clinical studies and trials, not only about using Amanita muscaria, but many other mushrooms in his fungal pharmacy that he works with. This book, just, it should be on your shelf. It should be your library. It should be your go-to reference. And you could get lost in it for hours. He does not know I'm making this video. I am not an affiliate. He doesn't have an affiliate program. I'm not an Amazon affiliate. I get zero for telling you about this other than I love him. I love his work. I love this book. I have pages bent and marked in and stuff in it. So what I'd like to do now is after this conference in Canada, he and I were sitting out snacking at um, a picnic table and I got this on camera for you. All right, Robert, we're going to ask you questions. You may not know the answers. I, I'll tell you if I don't. <laughs> try. Mm -hmm. What are your top five medicinal mushrooms? Uh, the five top red by common name would be reishi, would be turkey tail, would be cordyceps. Um, I don't know, I'm a little more struggling with the next ones. Uh, my talkie, I think, is a really choice one. And then, um, hmm, what would be my, because I usually give a course on the top 10. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say um, Amanita muscaria. Is that because I'm the one asking the questions? Yeah. <laughs> they can't do that, man. <laughs> no. <laughs> what about honey? Not no. so much. Well, they're, they are, but they're not. No. And then a lot of the ones I really like. Chaga. I would say shiitake. Okay. Fair enough. Can turkey tail assist in women's cervical health? So there's a myth about turkey tail. The, there's only one semi-clinical um, trial on turkey tail fruiting body. 
almost all of the product on the market where there's been scientific studies with humans are based on PSK or PSP out of Japan or China, which is a fermented turkey tail mycelium product. And most people don't know that. And so the collection of turkey tail fruiting bodies, which is fun and which is good, but we don't know. I had no idea, man. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Do you know how to ferment them? Pardon me? Do you ferment them? Do you know how? No, no, that's a special process. Wow. Cool. I'm glad I asked you that question then. Um, can mushrooms be used in skin care? Yes. A lot of the mushrooms, particularly the polypores, but, but you know, like shiitake is already being used or buttons. But a lot of the ones that grow on trees, like your red belted conch, etc etc they all have really high carbon uh, fatty acids that are really good for skin and you're going to see more and more that they are even uh, uh dr wheel he, he put out a product with uh hypsozygous uh, extracts in it many years ago yeah so yeah the answer is yes and they're fat so, fat fatty acids are oil soluble so you use crock pot low temperature and then you get the extract in the oil and then you can make your preps from that. Brilliant. That's cool. The difference between poison and medicinal. Uh, dosage. <laughs> Thank you. Mycelium versus fruiting body. I'm a fruiting, fruiting body fan because most of the studies have been done on that. But as mentioned, fermented mycelium of turkey tail is an exception. And there's also products out there, uh, for example, heresium, uh, the That's lion's, lion's mane, mane yeah. yeah, has compounds both in the mycelium and fruiting body that are beneficial as long as you don't take them to the intermediate state. So, yeah, so it depends on the mushroom. I guess that's what I get down to. That's the interesting thing to me about mushrooms is just because humans are afraid of them and ignorant right now lately about them, you know, in the last couple of thousand years, doesn't mean they're simplistic. And just about every question, it's like, well, it depends. Well, it depends. <laughs> I did the thing with Trad Cotter and uh, Mark Jones in uh, Virginia a few years ago, and it got to be a running joke. Like, if somebody would ask a question, and we'd all go, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at the end of the day, it was like everybody knew what I was going to say, you know. It depends. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, absolutely. That's it? That's all the That's questions? It. Oh, Thanks. easy. I can get back to my cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you are enjoying my playlist on books that I believe you need on your bookshelf. And if so, could you buy me a coffee? YouTube demonetized my channel and the way that I pay the bills and keep this free is your wonderful, lovely donations. I love you, beautiful people. Bye.